Hello everyone, for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Rolds, and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's a fun show where we dive into FRC robots, what makes them work, and some really cool things coming on here. And today I have team number 4414, High Tide, coming in from Ventura, California. 4414 bursts out of the gate as a rookie in 2019, winning both their regionals and had an opportunity to compete last year at the Los Angeles North Regional, where they're the number three seed alliance captain. And today I'm here with Anshul, Bryce, and Burton, and we're going to be diving more into this robot, what makes it work. we got a brand new 2021 robot, comparing it to a 2020 robot. All this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Anshul, as mentioned, you have a 2021 robot uh, built here. Uh, we'll be doing some comparisons with your 2020 robot as well. Uh, really excited to see your team. I love your aesthetics and also uh, your performance. I remember interviewing your team in 2019. Uh, so take us uh, starting off on this robot with the uh, intake, and then we're going to be talking about the hopper a little bit as well. Sure. So um, 2020, uh, we had uh, at LA North, we had a uh, tube intake, which was actually all um, made out of box tube. Um, and then we actually made some adjustments for Ventura Regional, which sadly got canceled a week before we were planning to go. And so this made a lot of improvements. Um, we added a we added Lexan plates and um, we added more rollers. And this whole thing was just significantly stronger and um, much better at intaking the power cells. Um, and it was it was quite good, but it wasn't very compliant. Um, it was very stiff. So that was the uh, one of the big changes we made for 2021. Uh, we went mostly Lexan, actually all Lexan for the side plates. Um, and so basically, this thing just drops down. We have three sets of flex wheels, and that intakes the balls. Um, as you can see over here, this was pneumatically actuated. Um, however, to save weight on this guy, we removed all pneumatic components. So what happens is we start the match like this, and the turret comes around and hits the intake, making it fall down. Um, one of the biggest problems we had was power cells flying at the top and the side. And so we experimented with all sorts of Lexan sheets just going on, on the top. And it worked pretty good, but it wasn't aesthetic, or um, it also just didn't work super well. So we added this ball cage um, uses, using 3D printed rollers. We did a lot of 3D printed parts um, on both these robots. So when the intake falls, this falls with it, and any balls that get intook into the hopper just kind of stay in here. So on the intake itself, uh, the intake just drops, and then it's not able to be picked back up the rest of the match. Is that correct? Correct. So I, I know obviously at the at-home challenge, you don't really have to worry about other robots. Is there any uh, consideration right. though, if you're on, you know, if you end up playing in a, a field with other robots that, you know, you yeah. could have robots bumping into your intake and any potential breakage. Have you thought about that at all? Right. So um, on the original, uh, I guess the modified 2020 robot, um, like I said, it was all tube. So this, I would definitely be concerned about a robot hitting. Um, you can tell it's not super strong, um, but with all of the Lexan, we actually doubled up on quarter inch plates um, or quarter inch sheets. And this is very strong, got a lot of compliance. Um, we've run it in the wall plenty of times <laughs> and uh, it's, it stays structurally sound. Um, the only thing we're a little concerned about is this ball cage. These 3D printed parts might not be the strongest. However, we have the option to mark forge new brackets, which um, should be a little bit stronger and hold up to uh, wear and tear. Well, I look forward to future videos of you uh, just smashing your robot into the walls. That'd be interesting to see. So uh, as we uh, move on into your robot, of course, we're going to be talking about the hopper next. So tell us about yep. uh, what goes into your hopper and any changes you might have made. Sure. So um, in terms of changes, there aren't a ton. Um, it's very similar to the original. Um, however, we did make a similar change using a lot of Lexan. We uh, swapped out all of this sheet metal and tube for Lexan. Um, we got these rollers with 3D printed caps and then just plastic tube. And um, they're all connected by belts and connected with using these uh, uh, Lexan brackets. Um, basically, it's just the old version that we modified slightly uh, for the 2020 version. Um, the balls come through, touch the rollers, and get fed into the elevator. Obviously, this thing is significantly shorter, so there's not much room. Um, versus on the 2020, we had a large elevator, so it would feed all of the balls into there. Um, versus this guy just sits inside of the ball cage. Um, until it's ready to get fed into the shooter. 
So are, are you able to hold five power cells still, or is this specifically designed for three? Yeah, so um, it works great with three. It works great with five also. Um, there are some slight modifications we can make. Like, it, it does five pretty well. Um, however, we may choose to make this a little bit larger um, just to give it a little bit more room. But, yeah, it's ready for a uh, off-season infinite recharge match. So I noticed on the uh, hopper itself you have the, the two yes. side rollers um, yep. that are meant typically to not have the balls jam. Can you just talk about a little bit? Uh, right. How are those spinning? Are they opposite spinning? Do what, Does one spin slower than the other? How does that work? No, they, they spin at the same rate, and they just feed into the elevator. Uh, it's very simple. Simple. So there's no there's no potential uh, worries about like uh, uh, power cells jamming or anything like that. Is that I mean is that what the bottom roller helps out with? Yeah, that definitely helps a lot. We did a lot of testing um, on trying to make this not jam. We played with just like the heights of the intake where it needs to fall, um, and in its current state, it's it's pretty good. Um, we haven't had too many jams. Sure, fair enough. Uh, so we're going to go over to uh, Bryce next, who's going to be uh, talking about your shooter uh, on your robot. And, uh, you know, if it's anything like uh, previous robots I've seen, I can't wait to hear more about uh, how the shooter works uh, and the uh, different options you built for this as well, too, uh, Bryce. Yeah, so uh, when the 2020 game came out, we knew that we really wanted to uh, be able to shoot the full court shot from behind the color wheel. So we had that design element in mind when we started building. Um, so in order to power that, we have a dual Falcon configuration. Everything is uh, belted together, so it's all synced, including these uh, uh, hood accelerator wheels. We use um, polyurethane flywheels, and uh, actually these only weigh a pound each, and uh, we added these uh, steel plates. And the total weight of the steel plates is about five pounds. So uh, this whole flywheel is about seven pounds. Wow. A lot more than the uh, just the urethane wheels. Uh, one of the biggest additions that we've made is the uh, four flywheel accelerators right here. And um, originally on the 2020 robot, we only had two. And the, the reason that we added those flywheel accelerators at all was uh, the added compression in the uh, hood allows older balls to... Uh, fly just as well as the newer ones uh, because we have more contact surface with the flywheels. So what actually powers the, uh, the those accelerator ones? Uh, it's all belted together to these two Falcons right here. Oh, so, oh, so the entire the shooter main... is all belted together? Yes, correct. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and looking at a, you know, a seven-pound flywheel is probably one of the heaviest I've seen uh, so far in at least all the interviews that we've done. Uh, what is uh, like the 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 time for that uh, shooter to actually get up to speed. Uh, and then uh, when you are shooting in between, are you able to keep that uh, speed pretty consistent after each shot? Yeah. So um, it usually takes about, I don't know, one to two seconds to spin up fully. And uh, because of the added weight, we can keep full speed uh, between shots almost entirely. So we have a very rapid feed rate through the shooter uh, when we're uh, feeding balls and doing cycles. So tell me a little bit more about uh, the turret itself, too. Of course, uh, the hood that you have on it uh, and then the uh, degrees of motion that you have on the turret or anything else you want to add for the shooter as well. Yeah, so um, the the hood is actually a 3 d printed uh, Mark Forge carbon fiber nylon hood, and it's a uh, telescoping mechanism with three parts that allows for a, a large range of motion on our hood so we can shoot from long range, or right up next to the, uh, the goal. And to power that hood, we use these linear servos. These are super cool. We don't, um, because we use these, uh, we don't have to deal with like uh, big gear boxes um, to move the hood. And uh, the linear servos are really easy, lightweight, and very precise for hood control. And how many degrees of motion are you getting on, on the turret itself? 180. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, on the 2020 robot, we actually had a 360-degree turret, which uh, served very well. But because we moved to a swerve drive, we actually don't need the 360-degree turret anymore. So we switched to 180 to save weight with um, our wiring. And so we don't have wiring getting into all the other mechanisms. And it's just it's much simpler. Yeah, fair enough on that. Um, so looking uh, at, at the shooter, 
Uh, one of the things I think is great is that conjunction with Swerve Drive as well, too. So uh, has your team done Swerve Drive before? And then uh, regardless of that, how uh, when you're looking at actually mixing that between your Swerve and supplementing some of your shooter, can you talk a little bit more about that experience? Right. So we have done Swerve Drive before, um, and I'm actually going to pass this off to Anshul, and he's going to talk about our past Swerve Drive. So we have experimented with Swerve Drive before. Um, we actually have one of our V2 modules here that we um, ran briefly. We didn't actually spend too much time with it. Um, and it worked quite well. We used 3D printed pulleys and a belt going between them. Um, and this actually worked uh, very well. Um, however, there are obviously some concerns with Swerve and the reliability. And so we don't want to be stuck in a match and have this fail on us. So we did go ahead and just purchase the Swerve Drive Specialties uh, Mark III modules. Um, which are powered by Falcons as the rest of our robot. Um, we only use Falcons. And uh, they work extremely well. Um, we're super happy with the uh, reliability, um, as well as just being able to whip around the field and not have to worry about um, orientation uh, like we used to when we used tank truck. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So we're going to be wrapping up uh, with uh, Burton, who's going to be going more into the programming, uh, some of the architecture that goes uh, into the uh, robot as well, too. So love to hear a bit more about that, and we'll, we'll take a look at what some of that code also looks like on the robot. Okay, so the goal of our code this year was to make it as easy for the drivers as possible. Uh, the first thing we wanted to do was we wanted to fully utilize the potential of the swerve drive. So we used field-oriented control. What that does is it uses the gyro to determine straight on the field. So no matter the robot's orientation, uh, the robot will go in the direction the joystick is pointing. Uh, Another thing we wanted to do is we don't want the drivers to be adjusting the uh, turret and the hood angle all the time. So what we did is we lined the robot up to all the points of the accuracy challenge and tuned those, and we put it into an interpolating tree map. What that does is it uses the vision to go back into the map and get those points or any point in between and accurately make shots. Uh, another thing we wanted to do is we wanted to make the robot know where it is on the field at all times. Uh, this is useful for when the, uh, the vision might lose the target when it's moving around. Uh, to do that, we used odometry, but odometry seemed to accumulate a lot of error over time. So once we did find the target, we used a pose estimator to relocalize the robot with the field. Um, one thing we're working on right now is shooting on the fly. So uh, a problem we encountered with doing that is that the limelight got a lot of vision, got a lot of error when we were moving around. So we used a series of feed forwards. Uh, one of those is for strafing, and another one is for turning. And what that does is um, it counteracts for the limelight latency when the robot moves. So we can accurately make shots. Do you guys have any other sensors on the road that maybe weren't talked about? Like, do you, do you use photo gates or anything like that in regards to, like, when power cells come in? Uh, can you maybe talk about some of that process and how you know, like, you know, where a power cell is at any given time inside your robot? Yes. Yeah, so we use a beam brake sensor in here uh, that can detect when a ball goes into it. And once it sees the ball, it stops all the – it stops the elevator from intaking more. It can, it can only hold one ball at a time in this area, center area. So why don't we uh, take the robot down. Let's actually take a look at uh, some of the power cells coming uh, through the robot. Enabled, yeah. So when we enable the robot, um, we have the turret hit the hard stop. That's one of the sensors we have on the robot, obviously to localize. Um, and so when it hits the hard stop, it also hits the ball cage and intake, which um, actually it's it. So here we go. Okay, so now we'll do, um, now we'll intake some power cells. Um, we have our spin up on a toggle. So basically when we hit spin up, um, it spins up to the correct speed and we'll start tracking the goal. Um, so obviously we can shoot from anywhere on the field. Um, so 
So our shooter, because of all the um, all of the accelerator wheels, we're able to shoot uh, quite a few power uh, power cells, um, and the accuracy doesn't really change much. So we're gonna feed maybe 15 balls into the shooter, um, and they should all go into the center of our gear. Well, yeah, hold on. All right, go for it. One of the things Burton was uh, mentioning is that we worked on shooting on the fly. Um, so like you said, we used the pose estimator. So we'll go ahead and uh, demonstrate that. I'll do one more. Um, we also have the same sort of thing for rotation, so I'll go ahead and do that. Well, 44-14, high tide coming from California. What an incredible team. Uh, this team has definitely uh, been on my radar since they first started really coming out of the gate strong and building just supreme top-tier robots. Guys, thanks for taking the time to speak with us about your robot. Uh, wish you best of luck in this year. Hope to see it uh, play at some point in person, and uh, good luck in future years as well. Thanks. We would like to thank our friends at Striker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.